Ahoy hoy everyone, and welcome to this guide for setting up how to use the Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller to play emulated games using Project 64 via Steam input on PC. And this guide will show you how the sort of extra programs you might need to set it up, how to set up all the settings and everything, how to get your controller working so you can play fantastic games like Banjo-Tooie that we see on screen here with the N64 controller, you know, the way that they were meant to be played. And hey, if you're into this kind of stuff, which I assume you are by watching this video and you like the N64, then you should consider giving the channel a subscribe, checking out some of my other content. I mostly look at playing either N64 games or playing modern games with the N64 controller, and that'd be great. And if not, well, let me know in the comments which game you want to play most using this guide. So let's dive straight into the first things you'll need. So in order to do this you're going to need to uh, have a few things set up. So first of all you need to have a Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller which you get from the My Nintendo Store. Um, this is what I'm using. I, so I haven't tested this with any third party N64 controllers but yes. And this will need to be connected via Bluetooth to your PC and set up for Steam. Um, and if you don't know how to do that then I rec highly recommend that you check out my guide that I already made on connecting this controller to PC and using Steam input with the N64 controller. That'll cover how to connect it, how to bind your buttons and some other issues that might come up. So if you have, if you're not sure how to do that, then I would go check out that video, which should be shown in the corner of the screen or something and then come back here once you're familiar with how to use the N64 controller. So that's number one. Number two, obviously you're going to need to download Project 64 from the their webpage and also some ROMs for whatever N64 games you want to play and make sure that's all set up. Once you have it downloaded, here we are within just the Project 64 program and it's already got, I've already set up the directory for where the ROMs are, which you do when you, when you set it up. So just make sure you have the paths linked to here and it should read the zip files. You don't need to unzip them or anything. Just make sure they're all in the same directory. Key things, uh, settings you need to change, I would say, for this to work. Um, you want to go to configuration, so options configuration. Make sure your directories, again, you can make sure they're all set up here and change them. But on general settings, I would make it so that you enter full screen mode when loading a ROM. And then if you come down to plugins here, I would change by default, you will have Project 64 input plugin for the controller plugin. Change this to NRAGE for Project 64. This is very important, otherwise it won't work via Steam input. So otherwise everything else is all good. And then you can go to your options. Um, make sure your graphic settings are all set up so you've got the right resolutions and everything set up. Obviously every system is different, but you can play and optimize with this to make sure you have the best up experience. Um, next up, input settings. So, if you have it changed now to the plugin, then by default it will look something like this, where you have um, the keyboard inputs set up for the um, controller, and you can perfectly work with this, but if you click X input here, then you get options for the different buttons set up. This is how I have it set up, and it, this will link also to my Steam input, which I'll cover in a minute, so we'll get back to this. But yeah, you just need to make sure that you have that correct controller plugin enabled. So to make this all work via Steam and to have Steam input make it so the N64 controller is recognized by Project 64, this I've got working using the Steam ROM manager. So you can go to their uh, GitHub here and find it there, go to their releases, and then download the appropriate one, whether MSI if you're on Windows, there's also a Mac version there if you're on a Mac, so yeah. Uh, make sure you have that downloaded and um, installed. When you boot it up, you'll be greeted with a screen somewhat like this, except this will all be empty. This may look a bit intimidating, and I was a bit scared at first, but what is actually really good is that you can go straight up to the community presets here and just start typing Project 64 in and you'll see it comes up here. Nintendo 64 Project 64. Click that and it will set, sort out pretty much all these settings will be then set up for you. You will need to change your uh, Steam directory so just you can browse and find where your Steam is installed. Uh, same for the ROM directory and where the executable is for the Project 64. And that's basically all you need to do. And once you have that set up you'll be able to then have you should have like an N60, Nintendo 64 Project 64 on the left here. 
and then you can click up to the top and you can click add games. So far I have three downloaded. I've got Banjo-Tooie, Perfect Dark and Super Smash Bros. And they should show up in your list here. You can even change the little, you can change the artwork on them if you really want to. It's really good actually. These sh should show up here. However many you've downloaded will go here. And then you just need to click save to Steam at the bottom. And then it should uh, write them and that will then be in Steam. And then I would recommend that you either restart Steam or have Steam closed when you do this so that then they will pop up in your games library. So now here we are back in Steam and we have, I have my games here in my Steam library. I've got Banjo-Tooie, Super Smash Bros and Perfect Dark here. And I even have these cool little splash arts which um, the ROM manager lets you do as well and you can put custom ones in if you want which is fantastic what you will need to do is once you've got these you can see these in steam we will then go into big picture mode so once again if you've not seen my previous guide on getting the n64 controller to work via steam steam input and steam big picture mode then i would uh, recommend watching that before advancing but if you're fine with rebinding keys in steam and you've used steam input before then you'll be all right once you're in you can select one of your games and then go to the controller input here. So I have made um, a template and I've shared this with the community as well. So you should be able to see this um, here by, by me, by Dr. Matt, which says Project 64 NSO N64 controller. And this should work fine with all the sort of any ROM that you're using through Project 64. But if you want to see what it looks like, then you can view the layout here and it looks sort of like this. It's actually quite easy. You need to match up obviously all the, the face buttons that are there, the A button, the B button, D-pad, etc. The, the, the bumpers and the triggers um, should be all set up. Um, the only things really you need to change is that the right trigger on here is actually to the left trigger and the, um, the C buttons go to what are the right sticks. So X, Y, right trigger and the back button equate to the C buttons and um, I'll show you why it's important to set it up like this in a moment but yeah once you have that all set up you can press play and then after it does a few things it should boot up in full screen which is what we wanted and here we've got the wonderful opening of Super Smash Bros which I'm just going to very quickly skip through right there so Got my N64 controller in hand now, and as you, I hope you can see, it's all working great. So how did I do that? So with the Steam, having making sure you've got the correct Steam input is um, important. And now I'm going to show you, go back a step to what we were earlier to make sure that you have got the correct button inputs on Project 64 so this all works. Okay, so I've just put the game into windowed mode for now, pressing escape um, so that I could access the options again so we're going to go to input settings and here we are here we've got our controller so as i showed earlier it's plugged in we're using x input and these are the button inputs that i use so we've got uh, the a and b button uh, quite obvious there is no x and y button so i have got those uh, set to none the back button is c down because that'll equate to what we've got it bound to on steam it input obviously you can change that if you want to but this is just what i find works for me, uh, start, start, uh, left bumper uh, L, right bumper R, don't need the thumbsticks, left trigger I've got to Z, and then right trigger is uh, the right C button. Here you need to set the analog stick to the left thumbstick, the right thumbstick to the C buttons, because that's how we've, we've got it set up um, in Steam, and the D-pad is the D-pad. and that should all work pretty well um, like that and what you can actually do is um, save your profile and have it so that you can apply it basically to every game. Uh, your other option if you find you're having issues with that is if you uh, turn X input off. Um, I, I made a profile where it's instead of I've got N64 Steam input and I've also got keyboard. So. This is using the default um, controls and I have a specific uh, controller binding setup which is also shared on the community which says um, Steam keyboard um, settings and um, yeah this equates for that and you can 
match your buttons to different keyboard buttons, which are also read by this, completely fine. Um, just for simplicity, I'm using the X input and the Steam input that matches what I've got. So let's see what this looks like in-game. And here we are, we're in Super Smash Bros. I'm Kirby and I'm against Donkey Kong. So, control sticks working fine, Porygon is there. I've got my A buttons for my attacks. I can do my different direction on all attacks. I can do the B button for the special attacks. Um, you can do either tap up or the C buttons to jump. And it all works really well as I die, but you get the idea, it it all works really well. well. Let's just, and it's not just for Super Smash Bros, I can do the exact same thing to play different games as well. So another nice thing is if you need to change anything, if I just pause the game, you can press the home button and it will bring up the Steam input and you can adjust your controller if you think there's anything wrong or you want to change anything for comfort's sake. You can do it here, and you can also use this to actually exit the game, which is quite nice without having to use your keyboard, which is what I thought you would have to do. Let's try something else. Let's try Banjo-Tooie. And here I am. I'm a, I've am literally just started Banjo-Tooie. Spoilers if you've only managed to play Kazooie on Switch Online, but Bottles is dead. Um, but yes, this is a good one because it uses a lot of buttons, so we can see the Z button, the A button works. We can do that. The, with the B button, we could do our talent trot, we can shoot our eggs. We don't have Wonder Wings, so we can't do that. And yeah. We can do all sorts of nice things. We can kill this guy, and yeah. Look at that. Change the camera with the C buttons. Go into first person if we need to. Look around. Uh, zoom back the camera. I. Honestly, it all works perfectly, I think. Um, so yeah, um, that's just a little bit of showing what the, um, the games look like. So there you have it. That's how you can use your Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller with a combination of Steam input, the Steam ROM manager, to then use it to play the Project 64 emulated N64 games, and you can play anything you want so long as I guess you can find a, a ROM for it. And this is great because there's a lot of games that aren't on Switch Online that I've been wanting to play, like Banjo-Tooie, and it's great that I have the opportunity to do that and using this controller that I spent my money on specifically to play N64 games and also sometimes some modern games. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see that. If you have any questions or queries about this, let me know in the comments below and I'll try and get back to you. Um, Otherwise, uh, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, goodbye!